Hi, this is Rolf Frieden with Paul Gauguin Cruises and uh, telling you all about the legacy, history, and current status of Paul Gauguin Cruises sailing in French Polynesia year-round. Our one ship, as you can see here, sails in some of the bluest, most incredibly translucent waters in the world. Year-round, this is where we are, 365 days a year, the Pacific Rim, never leaving the Pacific and French Polynesia in that area, never Alaska, Caribbean, Mediterranean, any other parts of the world, here year-round. Our actual company is the Pacific Beachcomber Company based in Papiete, Tahiti, and underneath that umbrella are four different things. The Paul Gauguin ship itself, which is what I've been talking about tonight, the Brando, Marlon Brando's private island, Tetiaroa, which is about 30 minutes north of Papiete, the Mai Tai Resorts in French Polynesia, and the Intercontinental Hotels in French Polynesia on uh, Papiete and Morea and Bora Bora. So all of these are under the umbrella of Pacific Beachcomber. We've been very proud to have been awarded uh, numerous accolades over the years. And this year, 2016, we were Travel and Leisure's number one small ship size cruise line. So this is a very, very uh, nice honor. We're only one ship to keep that in mind. So this is something that we can do with just one vessel as opposed to many, many vessels and many ships that other fleets have. But what I'm most proud of really is Best South Pacific Itinerary for consecutive years running. And you might wonder why, because isn't that what we're supposed to be doing and being very good at? But by the same token, this is all we do. This is what we focus on, and we do it better than anyone else does. We've been there 18 years cruising the South Pacific, and the reason we win that award is because we focus on one thing, and we do it extremely well. We are truly the very best value in luxury, and because of that, when you go to French Polynesia, one of the things that you'll find is that it's one of the most expensive places on Earth. It's in the middle of the uh, Pacific Ocean, as far from a land mass as you can possibly get, so things have to be brought in from so far away. As a result, it's a very pricey place to vacation, no matter how you cut it. We're all-inclusive, which increases our value that much more, because we include air from Los Angeles, all your transfers, day room at the Intercontinental or another property in Papiete, if needed, depending on your flight schedule. All your meals, three wonderful dining venues I'll speak a little bit more about later. Complimentary beverages, including throughout the ship, cocktails, wine, spirits, a mini bar in each of the staterooms throughout the ship, regardless of category. Replenished daily with bottled waters, diet sodas, beer, whatever you may be going through is replenished on a daily basis. All your gratuities are included and a welcome uh, flowers and fruit. So a wonderful way to experience this, pay one price up front and have everything taken care of once you get there. Hospitality, our staff and crew could not be kinder, more gracious, ever present. They're all over the ship taking care of our guests in the very best manner possible. Mainly uh, staffed by Filipino staff and crew in the dining venues and our cabin stewardesses and uh, so forth, but really all over the ship in a very, very nice, engaged way. And this is the nice thing about it. No pretense on board our ship, whether it's dress code, whether it's service level, but very, very high quality according to that. One of the very, very nicest things about this is our guest base is one of the most diverse you'll find on any cruise ship anywhere in the world. There are many reasons for that, but I think the biggest one is that Tahiti as a destination draws people for so many different reasons. People come here on their honeymoons, of course, because it's such a romantic part of the world. People also come here um, in their 60s, 70s, and even 80s because they've never been to Tahiti, and it's something they've always intended to do at some time in their life, and this is what they've decided to do when they get to that stage. So active people, I'll tell you about the water sports marina, so divers, snorkelers, um, all sorts of water sports enthusiasts, luxury cruisers of different types that haven't been to this part of the world because other cruise lines don't go here. So really, nature, culture, people that want to learn about a part of the world that is one of the most romantic and um, iconic, but they haven't ever really been here before because a lot of people compare Tahiti to Hawaii, and that's one very important point I think needs to be made. Tahiti and Hawaii are very dissimilar in many ways, even though they're both Polynesian destinations. One of those examples is that more people travel to the islands of Hawaii in one week than travel to all of the islands of French Polynesia combined in one year. So it's very different. There's no Waikiki. 
There is no uh, crowded beach anywhere in uh, the South Pacific in French Polynesia and Tahiti and specifically. So you really get this feeling of being disconnected almost at the ends of the earth and the beauty of this destination is unparalleled. I don't mean that in any way to criticize Hawaii. It's just a very different destination. The ship itself, the MS Paul Gauguin, as I mentioned before, has been in these waters for 18 years. You can see here just off of uh, the island of Bora Bora. Uh, James Missioner, by the way, the esteemed author, of course, called Bora Bora the most beautiful island in the world. And I think that's a difficult thing to dispute when you get there and see it for the first time especially and see it from the water in particular as opposed to just on the land. That's Mount Otumanu looming in the background and the overwater bungalows, of course, the uh, iconic image of Tahiti and French Polynesia. This ship itself was built for these islands specifically to sail in French Polynesia and the South Pacific. So as a result, she has a very shallow draft. So if you see in this picture here how close to the island we are, you will not see larger ships that sail through this part of the world in a photograph of that kind, whether it's Princess or Oceania or any of the others on their way to Australia, perhaps. Very good cruise lines, no question about it, but this is not their focus destination. As a result, we have this very shallow draft vessel an example is the island of Bora Bora is surrounded by a beautiful coral reef, and there is just one gap in that reef, one pass, which our ship is able to get through. Other larger ships cannot. So we get up in a photo like this where we're just nestled up close, intimate to the islands themselves. So the ship was built with a capacity of only 332 guests. We do not want to overrun these small ports like Morea, Bora Bora, Huahini, Taha, the places that we visit. Very small islands, and as a result, we want to make it a very small, intimate vessel that's in keeping with that destination. All Ocean View accommodations, almost 70% of the accommodations on our ship have verandas or balconies, which is a much higher percentage than most cruise ships have out there. And I'll show you in a minute um, some of the staterooms and suites, and they almost go to 600 square feet. So this is not a tiny vessel. It's a 20,000 ton vessel. It's just that because of the size of the, the ship, we have only 332 people. And that staff and crew ratio is 1 to 1.5. So there's 220 staff and crew to 332 guests. They're literally all over the ship taking care of our guests in the very, very best way possible. There's a lot of uh, writing on this slide here. And as a result, I don't think people should get uh, too consumed with reading every word, but the onboard experience is just to show that we have as much as the larger ships have to offer, and even more in certain ways. One of the very beautiful things about this experience is that it's representing the culture of French Polynesia and the islands in its most authentic, genuine way. We have a troop of young ladies and young men, French Polynesians, that work on the ship, about a half dozen young ladies, a couple of young men, and they're called Les Gauguin or Les Gauguin, depending on gender, and they are from the, the surrounding area locals, and they're on there, engaged with our, our staff and crew and the guests on board with culture, dance, music throughout the course of the cruise. And they're very, very lovely people, beautiful people inside and out, and just represent their culture in such a way that it's very, very special for our guests to uh, have that experience on board with them. Presentations by local naturalists, special guests, people such as Jean-Michel Cousteau, Jacques Cousteau's son, has on board with us four times a year a huge draw for uh, people interested in uh, reef preservation and uh, ecotourism and maintenance and preservation of the environment in this beautiful part of the world. We do have a beautiful theater with entertainment on stage e every evening, La Palette, a lounge, nightclub, casino. All the things the larger ships do offer, we have on our ship, too. Um, so it's not a question of being compromised in any way. Beautiful boutique. You can buy your back, uh, black pearls other things that are very um, very iconic of the islands down here. Uh, beautiful spa, fitness center. I mentioned onboard water sports marina. This is very important. I'll show you that in a little while, because this is something for our guests to take part in whenever conditions are um, such that we can do so. We'll lower that after the ship. Three dining venues, excellent, exceptional dining. And this, to me, is as important as anything in the value of this experience, because dining in South Pacific, in French Polynesia, going out to a restaurant, is extremely pricey. So we have one called La Toile, which is open for dinner only. Opens at 6.30 in the evening. That's open seating. Continental cuisine a la carte. You can have any type of uh, choice on the menu pretty much that you would like with specials uh, shifting from evening to evening. But it's one seating, so you come in at 6.30. And there's no need to leave at 8.15 or 8.30 as another seating comes in. 
So it's very relaxed throughout the course of the night. Two others, La Veranda and Le Grill. Those are open for breakfast and lunch, just as you wish. Come on in, dine off of the uh, menu or uh, the buffet, whichever you prefer. And they're open as specialty dining reservations in the evening. So that would be a specialty reservation you would need to make because of limited capacity. But on the other hand, there is no additional charge to uh, dine in those particular uh, reservation restaurants. So those are the three. I'll show them to you in a minute here and what they look like. La Veranda is managed and overseen by our chef proprietor, a gentleman by the name of Jean-Pierre Vigato, who has a Michelin-rated restaurant called Apicius in Paris. And he's an exceptional authority to have on board helping us because of the quality of this menu. And so something people really appreciate dining with us in the South Pacific is the variety, the quality, and just the, uh, the sheer value of it as well. This is the interior of La Toile, I mentioned before, open for dinner only. Typically set for tables for six, but if you prefer a table for two, a little bit more intimate setting, just let the maitre d' know that, and they'll be happy to set that up for you in advance. No problem at all. And then if you'd have a couple more guests come in and they want to set a table for eight, they can certainly do that too. So very flexible with that. As I mentioned, this opens at 6.30 in the evening throughout the course of the night. This is La Veranda. This is a specialty restaurant as well. With um, One of the beautiful things about the um, public spaces on the ship, throughout the course of the ship, throughout the course of your cruise, all over, every public space has floor-to-ceiling picture windows so that you have the visibility and that aesthetic appeal of the outdoors no matter where you are, even if you're not outdoors. So dining in, dining out, you're still going to be able to appreciate the beauty of French Polynesia outside your window. La Veranda Outdoor Dining, personally, this is about as good as it gets to me. This is my favorite place to dine on the ship is outdoors here under the overhang, protected from any of the elements, any of the sun, or whatever the case may be. And just here, dining, again, off the menu or the buffet, breakfast, lunch, very relaxed. And um, this is one of the most special places to me on the ship. And Le Grill, this is the third of the specialty restaurants, open for breakfast and lunch, just as you wish, come on in. Also for dinner, by exclusive reservation, of course, no additional charge. One of the nice things is this is on the pool deck, so this would be viewed from the pool area, looking down this hallway. These tables can be brought out onto the main deck around the pool, and so several evenings during the course of the cruise, you may be able to dine under the stars right there in the middle of the South Pacific. Very, very romantic setting. So the next picture here gives you an idea. If you were standing on this hallway um, looking down on the left-hand side of the pool deck here, that would be Le Grill, which you just saw. That's the interior. And in the evening, they'll pull them out here, those tables, out onto the deck. And these chaise lounges, one of the nice things about this is with only 332 guests on a 20,000-ton ship, the space ratio is exceptional. There's a lot of space for everybody. One of our mantras is that you will never wait in the line for anything, whether it's going into the dining venues for any meal, whether it's embarkation, disembarkation, boarding a shore excursion, getting on the tenders, any of that, you will not wait in the line. And another nice thing is you don't have to claim a chaise lounge and put your towel out there and hold it from somebody else during the course of the day. There's plenty of those available for the small number of guests that we have on the ship. So this pool area here is very well used during the course of the cruise. Sometimes in the afternoons, late afternoons before dinner, the band will come out and play perform some music. Sometimes Le Gauguin, Le Gauguin, the young French Polynesians, will play music and dance out on the deck during the uh, afternoons and early evenings as well. So it's just a very nice place for people to kind of socialize and mingle. Another thing I'd like to point out in this slide is if you were to think about five minutes into the future where the ship will be as it's going forward here, going right between this narrow pass of these islands here, Again, larger ships would never be able to do that because they wouldn't be in this position in the first place to get that close. But again, I've mentioned that shallow draft, and this is really, really important about this ship. Here's the Grand Salon. This is for the entertainment in the evening and during the course of the cruise itself. So this is a place where the shore excursions will meet in the mornings before they disembark to go on to uh, the motor coach tours or off-road vehicles or shore excursions of any kind. This is where Jean-Michel Cousteau, the other guest lecturers, the anthropologists and cultural uh, speakers and so on will um, have their guest lectures. So this is just a, a multi-purpose venue room, but especially in the evenings when the uh, entertainment is provided. Many evenings by Le Gauguin, Le Gauguin and the music and the culture and the dance of French Polynesia. Other times, uh, various things. There's even a cruise show on this, which is very interesting because not many cruise lines will do that, but because our staff and crew are so 
immersed with our guests and so engaged with them. It's sort of a, a very refreshing show to watch. Here is La Palette. This is on the pool deck on the opposite side of Le Grill from the main pool area. And this is the nightclub in the uh, later part of the night. People want to stay out till 2 or 3 AM dancing and having a good time, certainly welcome to do so. This is um, a very, very multi-purpose useful venue, though, because people can play bridge cards during the course of the day, too. One of the very nice things they do in here is every cruise in Bora Bora, because we do overnight. We spend one full day overnight and then spend another full day in Bora Bora and Morea both. One of the very nice things is that we have our Tahitian blessing ceremony. Anyone celebrating a special occasion, whether it be honeymooners, 10th anniversary, 15th, 20th, 25th. I met a couple actually celebrating their 60th anniversary on the last cruise I was on last year in Paul Gauguin, on the Paul Gauguin. And I asked them why. They just said basically why, you know, why they cruised on Paul Gauguin at that time. They'd never been to Tahiti before, and they had that answer of we never uh, had come, and we wanted to make sure we got here at some point in our life. So 60th anniversary. But getting back to what I was describing is anybody that is doing that, having a special occasion, when they fill out the guest information form with the travel agent, sends that into Paul Gauguin Cruises, they will be personally invited during the course of the cruise by the cruise director to join them at sunset in Bora Bora. At, this is a beautiful occasion, one of the most beautiful places on earth at the most beautiful time of day, perhaps, and this special occasion hosted by Le Gauguin, Le Gauguin, to commemorate those special occasions. And afterward, it's a very romantic 20 minutes, 30 minutes max, but at the very end, the photograph of each of the couples is taken out on deck wrapped in the traditional Tahitian Pareo blanket. So something very memorable to take that photograph home with and something that these couples will never forget. I mentioned a uh, nice little casino piano bar with blackjack roulette. Another uh, room that you don't see off to the side here has some slot machines. So. Again, they'll have tournaments during the course of the week here, and just a place that people like to use before and after dinner in the evenings. And then on the other side of the Dida, the croupier here, is a uh, little piano bar. Beautiful spa, deep nature, algotherm. This is a very lovely place for people to get treatments of different kinds, and uh, using the Monoi oil, which is very popular in these islands for massage, and this the scent of the tiari flower and the coconut. So a beautiful little spa, and this is um, taken care of and run by the uh, local Tahitian young ladies that work on the ship. We do have a children's program as well on Paul Gauguin. Um, this is designed for 9 to 17 year olds, accompanied by their parents, of course, under the auspice of Jean-Michel Cousteau, and it's called the Ocean's Future Society. But it's very different than what you might find in some other cruise lines with a, a rock climbing wall and video arcade and things of that nature. Very different. It's much more intended to be experiential, whether it's uh, you know learning about reef preservation, hiking in the rainforest, snorkeling, of course, learning about the history of the islands and marine biology and ecology. So really a very educational and interesting and motivating experience for uh, youth to have on vacation with their parents. Numerous guest hosts as well. We'll have, whether it be artists, oceanographers of different kinds, Nice thing is that we have several wine groups coming up uh, in 2017. There's um, BV and there's Frank Family and other wines that uh, wineries that Expedia is um, working with on wine groups that will be traveling with us next year. So some very, very interesting guest lecturers along with Jean-Michel Cousteau, who I've mentioned already several times. Here's a quick shot of our water sports marina, very important feature that um, other ships do not offer. Lowers off aft of the ship, and this is where we have complimentary checkout of your snorkeling equipment, fins, masks, snorkel equipment at the beginning of the week, and just turn them in at the end. But that's uh, complimentary for you to use during the course of your cruise. Um, kayaking, windsurf, paddleboarding, stand-up paddleboarding, all this is available with instruction, complimentary as well. And this is where the Zodiacs will leave for the diving and snor snorkeling and scuba adventures. So. All of this is provided right off of the aft of the ship. Again, weather permitting, needless to say, but just a beautiful destination to do this. The clarity of the water is phenomenal. You can look down 40 feet and see fish swimming beneath you. It's so temperate because of location. It's only about eight hours from LA, but it's a different world. And it's about as far south of the equator as Honolulu is north. So it's temperate year round, 75 or so to about mid upper 80s. Show you some of the accommodations here, starting with a couple of the owner's suites, which are the largest. These go up to almost 600 square feet with a double verandas, two sleeping areas. 
And then the grand suites, of which they're not quite as um, spacious in size, square footage, but these ones have verandas that face directly forward, which I think is very important because as you're sailing, you're seeing exactly what the captain is seeing with these verandas as opposed to the owner suites or any others that are along the side of the ship. Category A, all these categories you've seen, the owner suite, grand suite, category A here, they're all butler service, so if you need anything whatsoever, set up a cocktail party for you and some other guests, um, help you with shore excursion, bookings, so, so on and so forth, the butlers can do that. This is category A, flat screen TVs, as I mentioned, the stack, uh, stock mini bar in each of the staterooms as well. And category C and D, when I've been on the ship several times, I've been in the category C, did not have a butler, and that's uh, something I managed to work through, but category C and D, these are beautiful accommodations. C has a veranda. The D is the same size interior space as a Category C, but does not have a veranda. So 70% of the accommodations, as I mentioned, do. And then the others do not. But there are no inside categories. I think it's very important to point out so that no one will have an in inside cabin with no exterior view of this beautiful French Polynesian atmosphere around them. So. Very important to uh, to make sure you know that you still have the beauty of the setting, even if you don't have a veranda. One of the uh, misperceptions about French Polynesia and Tahiti is that it's about a day and a half or two or three away, and you cross the date line. The travel industry knows basically where it is, but the general public doesn't necessarily, and I understand why, because so few people travel here relative to Honolulu. But if you look at this picture, very important to point out, Papiete is about the same distance from the equator south as Honolulu is north. It's directly south of Hawaii and Honolulu. So as a result, you don't go into any other time zones. It's three hours before Pacific Coast time, same time zone as Honolulu. And it's five hours from the west coast to Hawaii. It's eight hours from the west coast from LA to Tahiti. So really just that three hour difference. And um, Tahiti Tourism came up with a slogan, and it's about 20 years ago now, and I wish I'd made it up, but I didn't. It's um, three hours beyond Hawaii and 50 years behind it. And I would tend to agree with that. Again, based on the fact that you just don't have anything close to Waikiki, you don't have any of the strip, you don't have any of the uh, crowded beaches, any of those things that you find in Hawaii, again, and there's beauty abounding in Hawaii. It's just that this is a very relaxed setting with very few people, relatively speaking. And um, the locals, the French Polynesians, are just wonderful people, very engaged with the tourists that come. And it's just a, a beautiful place to be and spend time. 2015, last year, I just want to point out differences of where we went last year because 2016 we did not, and in 2017 we will be going back to Fiji, Tonga, and doing some longer itineraries into that part of the world. So last year, 2015, we did a Fiji round trip, but our standard itinerary that we base everything off of, the kind of foundation itinerary, the footprint, is a seven-day Society Islands round trip, which means you would embark the ship in Papiete after the flight from LA. Your first port of call would be the island of Huahini. Then you would spend the next day in Taha and this beautiful beach day on Motu Mahana, it's called, where we have no, no one else there except the guests of Paul Gauguin Cruises and a beautiful beachfront barbecue and sort of a equivalent to a Hawaiian luau going on there. That's the second day in Taha. Then we would go to uh, Bora Bora, spend two full days with an overnight then leave Bora Bora after two days and go to Morea, the island of Morea, for two full days with an overnight in between. So that's our seven-night base itinerary. Then off of that, we go to the Marquesas, the uh, Tuamotus, the Cook Islands, and then again, as I mentioned, in 2017, back to Fiji and Tonga and that part of the world again. I want to finish with a couple of things. One is the value, and I think this cannot be overstressed, overemphasized the incredible value of the all-inclusive experience that we provide in the South Pacific, because it is literally one of the priciest places to go anywhere. As a result, everything that's included in our particular package, we start our lowest rate of the year with air included from Los Angeles, starts at $39.95. All your transfers, all of your um, um, uh, gratuities on board, all of your meals, all of your cocktails, wines, as I mentioned before, entertainment. So if we were to position that against somebody going to Tahiti, trying to replicate this experience, getting from island to island, 
Another very big difference between Hawaii and Tahiti and French Polynesia is you can get from Kauai to Maui to Oahu and then you go to the islands in Hawaii much more easily with the air transfers and things of that nature. You can't do so in uh, French Polynesia other than the airport in Papiete and then you know going into Bora Bora on a small strip. You really have to take ferries back and forth, which really takes quite a bit of time too. So just to compare getting from island to island, all of the meals and packaging this all in together with air, we roughly estimate it would be closer to 6,000, but I think it would be closer to 7,500 or more, to be honest. So very, very big difference, and the value cannot be overstated. In general, why we're better than everyone else, I sum it up in a nutshell. We've been doing this for 18 years. No one else has. And we have this experience in this part of the world that no one else has been able to uh, to possess because they just haven't been here doing it for that length of time. So our tour guides, operators that we work with in ports are the very best we can possibly find. We're there year round. We have this full immersion into the culture with Lego Guin and Lego Garen. Very authentic, very genuine representation of the culture. Nothing less than completely sincere and honest about that because it is such a beautiful culture. Enrichment lectures. We have two days on private motus, the one in Motu Mahan on the island of Taha and then one off the island of Bora Bora, where you can spend a full day stretched out on a beach under a bent coconut palm looking up at Mount Otumanu. Again, as James Missioner said, the most beautiful island perhaps in the world, and soak that up for a whole day or any part of a day. And uh, you're all taken care of with the tender picking you up and bringing you back and so forth. So um, the onboard water sports marina, a huge part of the draw here. Even if you're not a big water sports enthusiast, it's very easy to snorkel. It's very easy to step into it and uh, take a kayak around. So all of this is available and uh, complimentary other than the shore excursion costs and things on the dives. Um, certified paddy dive team on every sailing. So again, we're set up from this from the get-go, for this from the get-go. So finishing up, I just want to thank you for listening and uh, taking part in this. But in the future, please think about it. It's one of the most incredible destinations on Earth, and I think we um, give it to you in a way that no one else can. And for 18 years, we've been doing this and very proud of the way we represent it. So thank you very much.